So this is the console. This is the console that everybody sees. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have access to all of these right now because this is a for-profit organization. And, right, you're, uh, you're on a, a youth scholarship or a youth, kind of youth program sort of thing? So they have a youth program. If you go to, I believe it is remotehamradio.com slash youth, I believe. It's a tab on their homepage. Uh, they have a monthly drawing that uh, you can enter. Mm -hmm. And uh, you enter that drawing, and every month they draw a new person, and you get added to the youth program. And these are all the stations we have. Someone's on this station, but this station has... Stack Yaggies. I mean, these are all really good stations. Yeah. We have this is our favorite one in H -H Haiti. HH2AA. That's so really if cool. you ever hear if you ever hear HH2AA on the air, it's probably one of us. Very nice. And, so I've always liked um, the remote ham radio kind of. Uh, any any remote ham radio because one of the hard things that young people have to deal with is is a station. It's really hard to get their own station up and running. Uh, and what Remote Ham Radio does is uh, they have a program that you can enter as a young person. I forget the age. Is it like 18 and under? I uh, believe. For Remote Ham Radio, I think, I think, I it's, think eight, it's like 20. I think it's 26. 20, oh, yeah, that's right. 26 because I'm 28 and I tried to get in on the program, but I'm two years too late. I remember now. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but if you're a young person under the age of 26, you can apply to um, use these amazing stations uh, on Remote Ham Radio. Um, and in addition to that, we'll talk about uh, recently Ray announced a youth initiative um, because the fallout of all of these young people joining these these free um, uh, amateur radio stations, really, you know, contest grade amateur radio stations, is that a young, lot of young people are using them up. Them up. And as you can see on the left side uh, over here, there are a limited number of radios you can pick from. Um, and so their initiative is, from what I understand, is they're going to work with schools like colleges and high schools to put their flex radios um, onto remote ham radio that the young people out there can use. Does that sound about right? Yes, basically. Very cool. And yeah, so a little more about remote ham radio and us youth. So this is the flagship station, mm -hmm. W1 Jonesport in Maine. And so we actually have a contest team set up that has, I think it was five youth and five OMs. It might have been four youth and four OMs. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's all of us together. We operated WPX sideband from this station. Won that, by the way. And so nice. we, we have put together our little contest team full of youth. And Charles is one of them, actually. Very cool. I see very, Charles very cool. is here now. Yeah. It's got uh, Zoom to finally work. Hey, yeah, sorry. I had to uh, change the location that I was doing this. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and your audio is much better than last night. So. <laughs> Very cool. So an, a question I wanted to ask you guys is, is so do you use ham ra a remote ham radio because you can't have a, a decent station at your house, or, or how, did, how did it kind of come to be to, for you guys? I'll answer that because I know ahead, Charles. Connor. So for me... You know, I have a station at home, but uh, it's nothing too crazy. You know, I just I just got a flex radio, so that's kind of the extent of my spending right now. Congratulations! <laughs> but uh, it's even even W two Jefferson, which is just a hundred twenty foot tower and a three element Yagi, much better than my yeah. station. Yeah, so you just, have a contest location station, too. and the noise is very low. I myself. Yes. I also have a station at home, but I have a vertical in the backyard, which pretty much does nothing but pick up a transformer, uh, you know, a couple feet away. So, I actually went in and, and bought an, an, a subscription to it. It's for for non youth and for the regular people out there. The the remote DX version is ninety nine dollars a year plus airtime, usually between nine cents and thirty nine cents an hour. Or yeah, yeah, it depends on operation. what power level you want to use. Depending on the power it's, level, yeah. Yeah, right here at Blueberry, which is kind of the best station you get on remote DX, is. Nine cents to let me see. I have a little bit more privileges, so I, I don't want to kick this person off. You can stand by receive, which is nine cents, a hundred watts is 39, and then a thousand watts is 69 cents. Yeah, so there's that there. And and I think it's a pretty good price for, for you know, the the old the OMs out there. Um, because imagine if you're putting up one of these stations, it would be like a ten thousand, twenty thousand, hundred thousand dollar investment. Um, you know, so. 
Um, but for the young people, especially, it's all free. You you do have a limited selection, I, I see, but like a lot of times these, these rigs have been up and active. Contest weekends might be kind of hard to find them, right? Well, <clears throat> so actually contest weekends, we usually can grab one of these. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is that for contests, usually uh, they will let us, if, if there's like a contest we want to work and one of the big stations is not active, mm -hmm. um, I know Charles and I got to use Summit, which is Ray's contest QTH in New York. Mm -hmm. We uh, were allowed to use Summit for uh, a contest. And so he'll let us use these stations for uh, contesting and stuff, just not all the time because, of course, we'd be on them all day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for my birthday yesterday, he let me use Eastport all day. Um, and so just things like that. So we get to use these stations. And of course, with our contest team, we get to use Jonesport. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. I'll, say, I'll let Charles talk for a minute. How has is, how is remote ham radio impacted your ham radio life? Well, it's really great. And uh, being able to use remote ham radio um, to operate other than using my home station, having access to all these uh, big gun stations that are in different locations where it's a lot easier to work DX. It's just incredible. And I've been able to pick up a ton of new entities and have a lot more fun in contests. That's really cool. About how many of you guys are, have been using, uh, um, of your age of, in the youth group, how many people have been well, like in, in, indoctrinated, I suppose? Well, let's see. You or can probably see this. Better word. We have our own Discord. But uh, Very cool. there are, there's uh, quite a few of us. Uh, there's about 10, 15 of us that regularly use it and i think i don't know the exact number uh i don't want to give the exact number but there's quite a few that are on it but mm -hmm. uh, don't use it but their privileges are not away there they still have access right very cool um what was i going to say i had a I had a thought for a second um probably wrote down something but all right so yeah this is this is really cool and like i said for young people this is this is a free thing but you have to sign up and obviously they're limited it's a limited resource so um if i had all the young people in my chat sign up it'd probably get get blown away but good thing ray has that in mind uh with the with the youth, youth initiative so here in the next couple of i'm not sure of the time frame but i imagine maybe a year or two from now you'll see a whole bunch more stations, much smaller stations, not necessarily like these big gun contest grade like you have in your picture there. Uh, towers and towers and towers and stacks of stacks and stacks of Yagis. Uh, pretty modest stations, dipoles, but with flex radio, so you get that kind of whole band spread in the in the view. So I think that's yeah. really awesome. And, and, and it's doing a really good justice for youth and ham radio because of, you know, the cost. It's and and once you get past the cost, it's like putting up an antenna in a in a HOA environment that might be hard, or in a noisy environment like in my case might be really hard. So this provides a lot of value to the young people out there. So, any parting uh, thoughts or or words of wisdom for other youth out there? Because I know you guys are are pretty avid ops. Like you're both contesters. I've heard you in the you you've, you guys have actually started the worldwide uh, sideband activity contest or or at least yes. somewhat affiliated with it. So that's been, that actually has a youth category uh, that, that gets uh, extra points for young people who are contacting young people, YLs and, and youth YLs too, so. I can talk about the youth program actually. Sure. Or the youth initiative, so I can change consoles here. So <clears throat> basically the only, it's open to anybody to add their station to this. Uh, the only requirement is having a flex radio. Mm -hmm. and decent internet so right now it looks like i'm the only one on the console but here's my station it's on my g5 rv because uh i don't have an antenna switch remotely yet mm -hmm. but um here's my station i can connect up to it it's my flex please tune <laughs> that's probably super loud oh it's not coming over the audio right now okay fine. cool well it's loud to me um <laughs> and so this is my station looks like someone was on 40 meters. Um, so anybody can connect. It's free up here. It's it's a free station for youth. Mm -hmm. And anybody connect connect to it. You got macros here, 100 watts, all the good stuff. Yeah, and that whole, man, that the waterfall is just juicy. Like, it's it's so yes. good to see, like, something like that. And that's, I'll, I'll talk from the OM perspective, but if there's something in, in the ham radio world that is making 
young people like open their eyes is, is seeing the entire spectrum all at once. And that it's not just for young people, like the, the people who have been running stations like the IC 756 or, you know, the, the TS 590, the classic, just LCD readout type of things. They fall in love with this kind of image immediately. Um, but it's especially enticing for, for young people, I think, because the uh, the classic ham radios, I guess, kind of are a turnoff because you don't you just see a number. It's like doesn't really understand what it means. But here you get you actually get a lot of science too, like what lower sideband and upper sideband looks like, what CW looks like, AM, all the different signals. You kind of get a second sense for what's going on. I imagine a lot of people can realize what that bar on the right is. It's the block of FT8 stations that are constantly there, a hundred percent of the time. And it's actually cool because it shows you. Uh, where the bands are for sub bands for all of the digital modes are in that yellow bar up there. Yeah. Neat. All right. So it's nine fifty five. I'm going to say thank you guys very much for coming on. Um, Charles, if you have any parting words, I'll let you uh, open the mic. No, I don't think so. Thank awesome. you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for the demonstration as well. This is really exciting technology and software for the next generation of amateur radio. Um, so, all right, I'm going to bring in Dustin in eight RMA and say 73 to you guys. Thank you. All right. 73. 73.